Hey everybody, it's Javad. It's a beautiful Sunday afternoon, but I'm here in the shop, uh, in my workshop, as you can see. And uh, I'm gonna do a little tour video one of these days when I'm not so busy building speakers. But uh, until then, um, I'm starting a new project and I'm using Ipe. Uh, some of you may remember, I've been talking about this since last fall and um, for a few different reasons, I didn't use it yet. Uh, but the biggest reason I wasn't too sure about gluing this stuff. I've never used it and if you go online There's a lot of people expressing concerns about using Ipe, uh, Gluing it whether the glue will stick and uh, since I've never used it. I can't really rely on my 30 years of experience and my gut feel on uh, how the woods I'm used to using actually glue and bond. And the last thing I want to do is build a speaker that breaks or falls apart, uh, has any issues. And I've built a lot of solid wood speakers and I haven't had any problems with any of them. And uh, a lot of that is just because I, I know how to put wood together and I've been doing it for so long, I have a, a good gut feeling for it. So because I've never used this, I wanted to do a little test. And um, so uh, here's what I did. All right, so here's the experiment I set up. Now, granted, this is probably not going to win any Nobel Peace Prizes. And, um, you know, this isn't necessarily a controlled experiment, but um, gives me the confidence to move forward. So I tested three different types of glues all by tight bond. The first uh, is a tight bond polyurethane liquid glue. This is similar to Gorilla Glue if you've ever used it. And uh, Pretty much can bond any two smooth surfaces together. Um, also bonds rough surfaces together. And it does foam out. So you can see after I applied it, it kind of foamed out here. And I, I scraped scraped it off. Um, but it dried up nicely. And this is tight bond. Here uh, is tight bond type 2. Premium water resistant wood glue. This is usually what I use to put wood together. Um, this I use as my control experiment. Um, basically, um, I just glued it together. I used two thin pieces and um, where on the polyurethane and the Type Bond 3, I wiped the glued surfaces down with acetone, which is recommended online to remove some of the oils. Ipe is a tropical wood. This stuff is rated to be buried underground for 50 years and uh, not decompose too badly. And so this is kind of the worst case scenario. It's not the recommended type of glue. They're real thin pieces and I did not wipe them down with acetone. And finally, Type Bond 3. This is recommended by a lot of people uh, for gluing Ipe and other types of oily tropical woods. This is advertised as waterproof. Um, I'm not sure exactly what separates it from type two. They don't want to give away a lot of their secrets, but um, anyways, this is even rated for food grade. So <clears throat> that's how, how uh, water resistant it is. And this is the type on three sample. Again, nice, nice uh, glue seam. This, is, this stuff uses and acts more like, you know, type two, like a typical wood glue and um, and so, you know, these are about an inch wide, um, good surface area, so I could really test out the joints. Now, just to confirm, let's see. Got a wood moisture meter here, so. Let's see, my workbench is about 8%. I think anything below 10 is considered good. And let's see. This piece of Ipe is about 9. Nine, very consistent. So these are dry pieces of wood. Um, it's kind of funny. This stuff's so dense. It's more than two times as dense as oak that it feels wet. It feels soaking wet, but it's just it's just more wood in there. So anyways, I'm going to do a little demo, but just to kind of cut to the chase, I tested both the polyurethane and the ultimate type three, and I could not break these joints with any reasonable amount of force. Um, the Type Bond 2, which was the worst case scenario, did break because it was so thin. However, you can see 
the glue did not break and really it was the wood that failed. Uh, you can see it here where there's the deposition of the one piece onto the other. So the glue joint didn't break, the bond between the glue and the wood didn't break, the fibers of wood themselves separated. And I had to whack this pretty hard to break it. So I don't know what all the fuss is about, maybe I'm lucky, but um, all three of these glues I'd be comfortable with using. I'm not a huge fan of the polyurethane just because it, if it's not required, it just fuzzes and fizzes out and I don't know. I'll probably use it for some other stuff, but I just, I don't get what all the fuss is about. I'm also not a PL construction adhesive. A lot of you guys building subwoofer boxes out there using that, no thanks. Um, I'll probably end up using the Type 3 just because I've used this. It cleans up with water and it's nothing too exciting. Um, and I, I'm used to it. So let's do a quick little experiment here. Now I actually broke my vise earlier. Hold on. Actually, let's see, I had to glue this piece of my maple just splintered off as I was whacking on it. Let me just move it a little bit. I broke it this time. That was a lot of shear force. Now let's take a look and see what failed. I mean, definitely looks like the wood is what failed. You can see those wood fibers on there. This looks like a little, eh, it's hard to say, but this corner here may not have bonded very well. But you can see this is, this is all, I don't know if you can see it, but when, when I touch it, that's, that's all wood fibers. And actually, this is definitely a wood fiber failure because this piece is still hanging on. So we can knock that piece off. It's actually like destroying my vice. So, have to screw that back in. Rip the screws out of the bench. But uh, I don't know, that's pretty good. So, anyways, let me know your thoughts. I'm pretty happy with how this stuff glued up. And uh, look for my new project. I'm going to call it uh, the EPQ3W, which stands for Epic Three Way. And that's using the new Dayton 8 inch Epic Woofer. Uh, Dayton AMT Pro 4 and an AMT Pro 2 and the Pro 4 and the Pro 2 I'm going to cross around 8 to 10,000 hertz because the Pro 4 really drops off uh, a lot above 10. Um, and it, you know, it's usable to 15 but uh, I, think, I think it'll be a really nice three-way and I've never played with AMTs and I've, I haven't really done a super tweeter type implementation either so that'll be fun. All right thanks for watching guys.